Welcome to Pocket Ronnie, where we save your mathematical life. We're going to be doing repeat factoring, which means we're going to factor and we'll, until we cannot factor anymore. Looking at regular numbers, like if we want to factor 20, we could factor it into 10 and 2. Well, we can still factor 10 again to 5 and 2. So essentially, we factor 20 down to prime numbers of 5 times 2 times 2. That is what we're going to be doing with these trinomials and binomials. We're basically going to be factoring till we can't factor anymore, which is the prime factors. Okay, looking at 26B7, okay, we have this trinomial. The first thing you always want to do in any time you're factoring is look to see if you can factor something out instead of going to straight to two binomials. Look to see if you can factor something out. Well, looking at the numbers of 5, 5, and 30, I can see I can factor out a 5 out of everything. But also looking at your x's, x cubed, x squared, x. I can factor, the most I can factor is an x. You look at the, the x with the lowest exponent. So I can factor an x out of every one of these. So I can factor out a 5x. If I factor out a 5x, it's like saying I'm dividing each little term by 5x. So if I factor a 5x out of this first term, I'm going to be left with an x squared. You can check yourself. Does 5x times x squared equal 5x cubed? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to have a negative. If I divide a 5x out of here, I'll be left with just x. Does 5x times a negative x give me negative 5x squared? Yes. And then factoring out a 5x out of here leaves me a negative 30 divided by 5. Negative 30 divided by positive 5 is negative 6. And the x's cancel. So if I go back and distribute this, 5x times x squared does give me 5x cubed. 5x times negative x gives me negative 5x squared. 5x times a negative 6 gives me a negative 30x. Always make sure that when you go back and distribute it, you're getting what you started with. We're not done. We want to continue to factor this trinomial. You are still carrying this 5x along. Don't lose that 5x. And now we're ready to, we want to factor this into two binomials. Factors of x squared, x, x. Look at your signs. This is a negative. The only way to get a negative here is to have a positive times a negative. Factors of 6, 6 and 1, 3 and 2. I'm going to use 3 and 2 because I need to get a negative 1 right here. Since I need a negative 1 right here, my 3 needs to be negative. Go back and check it um, just to make sure. This would give me a negative 3x and a positive 2x, which gives me a negative 1. And a positive 2 times negative 3 does give me a negative 6. So... We cannot factor any more than this, so we have basically factored until we can't factor any more. Now look at 26A13. Okay, always look to see what can you factor out first. Looking at my numbers, I can't factor anything out of my numbers, but I can factor stuff out of my x's. The most I can factor out of each one is just an x. It's basically like I'm dividing an x out of every one, that I'm going to write out here. So pulling an x out of here leaves me an x squared because x times x squared gives me x cubed. Dividing an x out of here leaves me a 5x. Dividing an x out of the last one leaves me 4. If I go back and distribute this x, x times x squared is x cubed. x times a positive 5x, positive 5x squared. x times 4, positive 4x. Okay, now I still need to keep factoring that trinomial. Bring your x along with you. Don't forget that x. So I'm ready to factor this into two binomials. Factors of x are x and x. I'm in a positive world, so everything is positive. Factors of 4 are either 4 times 1 and 2 times 2, but I want to get a 5x in here. So I will use 4 and 1. Since all my signs are positive, it doesn't matter where the 4 and the 1 go. Mentally check if you foil this out, do you get this? And you do. So these are the factors of that. I have three factors, x times x plus 1 times x plus 4. 
Moving down to 26B10, whenever you have a negative sign out of front here, watch for that. I can factor a 3 out of every term, but I don't want to leave my negative in front. So I'm going to factor a negative 3 out. So that way I'm not left with a negative in front of this x, this x squared term. So, well it's x cubed now, but in a minute it will be x squared. So I'm going to factor a negative 3 out. So anytime you see a negative in front, that is a tip to go ahead and factor your negative out. So I can factor a negative 3, but also x cubed, x squared, x. The most x's I can pull out of each one is just one x. I can't pull more than an x out of this one. I can pull an x squared out of here, but I can't pull an x squared out of here. So the most I can pull out is the lowest number one. So basically, if you want to write it like this, to know, to keep up with your signs, you're basically dividing a negative 3x out of each one of these. If I divide this by negative 3x, a negative, three, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. My 3's cancel, and I'm left with an x squared. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 24 divided by 3, 8. One of my x's will cancel here to leave one left. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 36 divided by 3 is 12, and my x's cancel. When I go back and distribute this, I should get what I started with. Negative 3x times x squared is a negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times a positive 8x, negative 24x squared. Negative 3x times a positive 12 is negative 36x. So I want to continue factoring. I bring my negative 3x with me. Now I'm ready to factor this into two binomials. Factors of x squared are x and x. I'm in a positive world, so everything is positive. My factors of 12 are 12 and 1, 4 and 3, 6 and 2. And I can see that I'm going to need to use 6 and 2 so I can get an 8x here. 6 and 2. Foil it just to make sure. Foil it in your brain. That will give me an x squared, a positive 2x, and a positive 6x, which is a positive 8x. Positive 6 times positive 2 is a positive 12. So on these, be careful of your signs. Okay, we're now looking at 26b3. So you can see we don't, we're not starting with a trinomial. Okay, so this is a good clue. If you can take the square root of this one and the square root of this one and you have a subtraction sign, look for a difference of two squares. But always look to see, can you factor something out first? And you can, we can factor a four. And then also you can factor out, the most you can factor out of both is an x squared. You're looking for the smallest exponent that you can factor out. So I can factor out a four x squared. It's like saying I'm going to divide each one by 4x squared. When I do that, then here I will have left x squared because 4x squared times x squared is 4x to the fourth minus 1. Okay, don't say 0. 4x squared, anything divided by itself, is 1. The 4 and the 4 cancel to be 1. The x squared and the x squared cancel to be 1 x squared minus 1. And x squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares. You can take the square root of x squared and the square root of 1. So keep factoring. Bring down your 4x squared. This is ready to factor into a difference of two squares. You can, the square root of x squared or the factors of x squared, x and x. Square root of 1 is just 1. The factors of 1 are 1 and 1. 1 should be a plus. 1 should be a minus when you factor a difference of two squares because then you get a negative 1x and a positive 1x which cancels. So this will foil out to be x squared minus 1. So this is your factors for that. Okay, looking at 26C1. Again, when you only have two terms and a subtraction sign, look to see is it a difference of two squares. Can you take the square root of x to the fourth? Yes. Can you take the square root of 16? Yes. Is there anything to factor out first? No. Nothing can factor out of each one of these, so you're ready to do this. The square root of x to the fourth, when you take square roots of higher exponents, you basically cut that in half. Cutting four in half is x squared. And so you ask yourself, 
Does x squared times x squared equal x to the fourth? Yes. What is the square root of 16? 4. 1's a plus and 1's a minus. Okay? When you FOIL that back out, do you get this? Yes, because you get a negative 4x squared and a positive 4x squared, which cancels. You're not done factoring. Okay? This factors down to here. You keep factoring until you can't factor anymore. We don't know how to factor or we don't factor sum of two squares um, the way we do difference of two squares. So x plus 4 does not factor anymore. You leave that as x plus 4. Okay, that does not factor into x plus 2 times x plus 2 because that will give you x squared plus 4x plus 4. That is not the same thing as x squared plus 4. There is a middle term. So do not try to factor this into x plus 2 times x plus 2. That does not work. Okay? So and that does not factor. I'll just do that. X squared minus 4 can factor some more, okay? Because it will factor into difference of two squares. So the square root of x squared, x, square root of 4, 2, 1's a plus, 1's a minus. So now we cannot factor any more than that. We have factored all the way down to prime factors. So again, this was difference of two squares. We factored it. The one that's positive cannot factor anymore, so it just gets carried along right here. But x squared minus 4 is another difference of two squares, and it will factor down to this. So these are your final factors.